It's time for This Week in Location-Based Marketing episode number 35, recorded live between Asif and I. We are both real, not robots, not computers. This is recorded live on Sunday, July 24th. We're back to our regular slot, maybe a little bit later. Asif, welcome back, man. I'm glad you made it on your long drive back from the heat wave. The heat wave, the heat wave that was like all over the U.S. and and uh, and all over Canada at the same time. It's crazy. I mean, uh, and I think I mentioned to you just before that we were driving through Washington D.C. on the way back up, and uh, I looked up at the thermometer in the car, and it was at fifty degrees Celsius. Fifty so, degrees Celsius. Yeah, fifty degrees. And I'm so surprised that your tires made it through that. In fact, I'll tell you, it was so hot. How hot was it, Rob? It's so hot in Ottawa that uh, I just put on a shirt just for this show. And we appreciate it. I know you do. I know you do. And the <laughs> listeners, trust me, you appreciate you that. Do. This you is do. where you really are glad that you actually listen to the show, not watch the video, right? Right. Because it was just a second ago. Well, as always, my name is Rob Woodbridge. I'm one of your co-hosts throughout this endeavor that we've done. 35 episodes. It's not middle age. It's almost our own age. I can't believe we've done it, but I'm, uh, I'm so proud to have, to have been part of 35 episodes. And as always, each and every one of those episodes relies on Mr. Steve Kahn. Come on, yes, buddy. Yes, and, uh, and, and the good works of the Location-Based Marketing Association. Um, and, uh, you know, just, just while we're on that thought, um, you know, I want, want to take one second here to promote our, our upcoming event. Uh, so we have an event uh, this coming Tuesday, that's the 26th, uh, in the evening in Toronto. So if you're in Toronto or can get to Toronto, um, we encourage you to come. It's called the Retailer's Dilemma, and we've got a, a retail panel. Uh, Rob will be in town as well. I and, will uh, be there. Yeah, it should be a great event. So six to nine uh, downtown on uh, downtown Toronto on Thursday, uh, on Tuesday evening. Well, so. and so show up, and obviously you can find information about that at thelbma.com. You can register there. Yeah. It should be a good event. Well, you know, and uh, as always, we've got a jam-packed show. So, you know, we're going to be talking about some of the stuff that Placecast is doing, Chalkboard in the U.S. Uh, we've got some a really unique idea for a rock and roll band. Great resource. couple of funding. Let's get this thing started with episode number 35. Can't believe we're already here. Uh, and we're cruising through these. That's 35 consecutive weeks where we've done this. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. It's awesome. Before Christmas, we started this, man. <laughs> Like, yeah, and, and for some reason, people keep listening. So I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Anyways. Probably because we actually do keep our clothes on in this episode. This is not the naked news, my friend. This is this not is it. But invasive. if it brings yeah. us an extra 100 people, well, we might consider it. Spread that around. Mm. Or, in fact, in, I'll, I'll put this out as a challenge. Unless we get another 100 views this week, it is going to be naked news. The naked <laughs> location-based marketing news Right. All right. All right. Let's get into it. First, the, you know, the first story that we're talking about, really an update. Placecast seems to be everywhere. They're defending their territory right now, aren't they? Absolutely. And, and so, uh, so this week, uh, they came out with an announcement uh, of something called a self-serve uh, uh, version of Shop Alerts, which is their, their platform, which AT&T in the U.S. has been deploying and a number of retailers have been uh, signing up to use. And obviously, it's been, uh, we've talked about it in the U.K., and the success they're having there as well with O2. And so um, what what this is, what Placecast uh, self-serve or Shop Alert self-serve is, isn't really a self-serve platform as you would think about it. It's not really for small and medium businesses to jump on board and start doing their own uh, SMS deals over, over a network. Directly, what it is 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 a platform or a web portal, maybe better put as a web portal, that enables their larger business uh, customers and partners, companies like AT&T, large retailers, um, and others who are, who are using their system to basically then allow their customers, their users, uh, to you know, apportion their own uh, offers and deals. And so it's really a white label geofencing platform uh, you know, with statistics and all that comes with that that empowers their larger OEM partners to basically then, you know, pass that power, you know, of customization and deal uh, affixing down to their to their customers. Like, do you know if this is, uh, I mean, do they need the hardware play for this or is this just uh, like a software-based geofencing? Like software. you've seen? It is, yeah. So, I mean, they're really getting into that, I mean, uh, their, uh, their, their IP or the way they defended what they were doing was basically that they owned the store because they had hardware in there, right? 
place cast you're talking about yeah yeah there's no, no there's no hardware there's in the no store. hardware there. so i mean basically the, the way the way this works is is you're triangulating triangulating position off of the carriers network so the carriers don't have hardware in the store either yeah but basically you know and, and there's different ways to geofence whether you're doing you know kind of the uh you know the diameter circular type of geofence or using polygon type of uh of, of measurements and different ways to do that uh depending on on what carrier what platform etc so I, I won't go into all that technical detail but effectively you know somebody walks into a geofence they've opted in to receive an offer or a deal and uh if if they've opted in through say T and T or O2 or whoever their their partner is that they're working with, what this new system, what this new self serve feature is saying is, look, the retailers. So let's let's play with AT and T as an example in mm -hmm. the U S. Um, so companies like the North Face uh, that are using the system. Okay, as a retailer, North Face can kind of go to AT and T, and now before they'd have to have AT and T provision all the stuff for them. Mm -hmm. Now they can basically through a web portal log in and, and you know put up their own deals and do their own things all on the AT and T Shop Alert system. That's really what this is: is, is self serve features for the retailers or the third party users, which are businesses yeah. of whoever the bigger OEM partner is that PlaceCast has uh, licensed the system to. Right, and, and apparently the reaches uh, you know across AT and T, Sprint, Verizon, T Mobile networks is two hundred sixty eight million people that that Shop Alerts can reach, and that's Right. It's a pretty staggering number, um, but yeah. uh, you know, I, I think that there's so many. I got a I got a bug flying around here. You see me swatting around here. Uh, <laughs> so many, um, so many different companies that are playing in this space. But I guess uh, you know, uh, certainly the relationships that that Placecast has uh, have it as the leader, as the dominant uh, dominant. Um, no question. Geofencing company. No question. I mean, I think it, it, if you're going to look at geofencing platforms today, these guys are the uh, kind of the gold standard at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and there's room. There, there's lots. There's there's room for sure. There's definitely room. So, Placecast launches their self serve pl uh, service platform. I like it. I always think of self service like soft service ice cream for some reason when I think of self service. Anyways, but uh, first story: Placecast launches the self serve uh, platform. Uh, uh, let's dive right into this one, which is Amex. This, this is where it gets interesting. Where uh, you know, there's there's two sides to location based services that we've always talked about. One of them is the carrier base, which I think PlaceCast really works well with the carriers. The second one is these credit card companies that are engaged in here that really can disrupt the coupon and the groupons of the world, coupon companies and the groupon companies of the world. Uh, so Amex, uh, you know, right on the heels of their Foursquare launch, um, sticking it in, uh, you know, actually working with uh, with Facebook. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we, we've talked a lot on this show about you know what? What is the role of the carrier and and the bank and the credit card company? And yeah. and and I've said several times to you, and I, I think we we're in agreement on this that, you know, the Foursquares and the Goalas and the Facebooks of the world, you know, from a location platform perspective, there's only so much they can do. But when it comes to actually, you know, making real money, you know, the, the big players are are the AT and T's and the carriers and the credit card companies yep. and the banks. And yep. at the end of the day, you know, if, if, if I was a betting man, I'd be out there saying that you know I'd be putting all my money on these guys actually being able to monetize these networks. Whether it's it's licensing things like uh, PlaceCast uh, platform and using that to deploy. If you're an AT and T or a Sprint or a Verizon or a Bell Canada or whoever, absolutely. But at the end of the day, you know, there's still this payment piece, there's a transaction piece, there's all this other stuff that needs to happen. And so Amex has said, look, we know this stuff is working. We've seen it already, you know, over in Europe with O2 and Orange and all these guys over there. We're moving heavy into into the payments, uh, location-based payment space. Um, we know, uh, you know, QR is there and it's a temporary thing, but we know that, you know, where this is all going. And so... They're gonna they're gonna play with everybody. They're they're gonna you know yes we did a deal with Foursquare and that's great but hey we're you know we got we're not tied to those guys. We'll play with Facebook too. And so this program I love it. It's called Like Link Love. Um, they, you know they came up with this cool little name for it. The alliteration. The like Link Love. Yeah. Yeah. The whole premise of it is is as a consumer that's on Facebook, uh, a user of Facebook, I associate my card. 
uh, to programs uh, on Facebook and choose deals associated with that, tied to likes. So if you go to a fan page on Facebook for a business, and one of the examples I read about earlier was Whole Foods or you know anybody for that matter, or a band for that matter, um, and you see all these people who like you know like that band or like you know Whole Foods or whatever it is uh, there. The question that you have to ask yourself as a business is, is, okay, great, so now I've got half a million people who like me, so what? How do I actually make money from that? How do I actually convert that into something that I can act, act on or do something with? And so Amex is basically saying, hey, look, let's let's find ways to monetize this where people are associating their card to this and making purchases and you know getting deals and doing things. So that's where this is coming from. It, it's really more of a you know targeted marketing, behavioral marketing um, tied to likes and, and actually creating a way to actually monetize likes. It, it, uh, and I like it because well, working with a partner like Amex, it's uh, when you do go through this process and you become, you like a band or a brand, um, the next time you use your Amex in that store or with that brand, it automatically deducts the coupon, say, that they're giving out, right? So that it's that power that I don't have to carry around a coupon anymore, just like the right. Foursquare deal, right? Yeah, ab absolutely. And so, and I'm actually just going to read from the from the release here. So it says, Amex will send statement credits to card members' accounts as they shop. So again, no need to pre-purchase anything or print a coupon. Yeah. And it's built on they they have a, a an open API thing called Amex uh, Smart Offers, um, which is all about this coupon coupon less offer you know type of of system so you know that whole idea of moving away from you know i got the thing in my email printing it out showing up to the store qr you know, codes all that stuff. yeah qr codes all that so so uh, you know. and, and what are the i mean there's some big companies that are doing this right now uh, i guess it's that's who it's open to right now it's some of the bigger deals bigger companies right well i mean this is kind of typical facebook right you know uh you know, same with their, uh, you know, their uh, their deal platform. I mean, it's yeah. it's it's very limited, you know, limited beta kind of thing. So, I you know, I, I don't have the list uh, in front of me, but yeah, it's it's not widely available. Yeah, it's like it's big brands. Like I think I remember like Dunkin' Donuts yeah. and H and M, uh, and you said like uh, uh, the Sports Authority. Uh, yeah, so these are these are the same companies that they're working with in, in numerous other deals, obviously. So. Um, I, I mean, great. Uh, I think this is good on Amex. Um, I, I would assume that that uh, Facebook wouldn't just limit this to American Express. They they're going to go through all the other credit card companies as well. This is this you is gotta not think so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that'd be you silly. Gotta... You're not going to go with the number three credit card as an exclusive, right? Who knows? Right. But I'm, I like it. A uh, link, uh, like link, love by Amex. Cool. Cool. Very cool. I think it's it's great. Yeah, and credit cards. I mean, I I just can't can't help but shake that the the feeling that the credit cards, the credit card companies or the facilitators, the brands like Amex, Visa, and Mastercard are are going to render Groupon obsolete, right? And we keep saying that, and uh, they have the power to do it. Um, but uh, the only thing they're keeping Groupon around, I think, uh, aside from their you know multi billion dollar business and and you know their, their you know hundreds of uh, thousands or millions of, of people that are a product a part of it. Is the fact that they accept uh, credit cards, multiple credit cards from everybody. So as soon as Facebook does this, this might be the the, uh, right. the beginning of the end. No, uh, great program, and like like you just alluded to, expect to see that get expanded to, to other uh, other cards and and other programs for that. Yeah, matter. like link love, like it, love it, linked it, done. Um. So this is an interesting one. If there are any gamers in the audience uh, who uh, who use uh, games on their mobile device, their iPad, their iPhone, their Android devices, their Blackberries, what have you, press OK. Launching a this a press what is it called? Uh, play uh, place play place play place um, play. So the company's network. called Press Press OK. The product's called Place Play, and they're describing it as a location enablement platform. So basically, what these guys have is an SDK software development toolkit um, that you know if you've got a game out, out there uh, you can basically uh, deliver location specific ads inside of that game via this uh, you know this this enablement platform that they've created so uh, it's currently available for iOS apparently it's coming very soon for Android so they're, they're working on that right now 
Um, but it's basically designed to combine the player's location with in-game and social data and then basically serving then uh, location-based contextual ads inside the game at the right time. Like it's, uh, you've been playing for four hours, it's six o'clock, you know, you can get a pizza from around the corner kind of thing. Yeah. Like like that kind of targeted. Um, So uh, is this not just, do you think this is just another, like a feature of any of the other ad networks? Don't you think that it would be really easy to replicate this? Or am I way off on that? Uh, I think functionality wise, I think it's, you know, you can replicate this. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, I haven't played with it. I haven't played with a game that actually, you know, is using this platform. So I, I can't speak to it firsthand. But um, you know this, the numbers that they've they've been talking about. Uh, you know, in, in some of their press releases are pretty interesting. So you know, again, I'll I'll, I'll go right to the numbers. But they basically apparently ran a three month uh, beta program uh, of this private beta um, around tournament participants, and they basically said that tournament participants played titles 1.6 times more than standard gamers. And also grossed eCPM rates somewhere between ten and twenty dollars. So these are significant CPMs. I mean, you know, those those aren't you know CPMs you just throw around. But ten ten to twenty dollars CPMs are, are are pretty pretty impressive. But it, yeah, that is uh, that is very high. And uh, I wonder how they have that corollary to uh, you know that one with the reason why people play games longer when they're in their ne- when you know they're serving ads from this network. It's a weird. That's a weird number to, it to is, throw out. It is, but I get—I I, I mean, it's got to be, you know, because you know they're based on your location and the other players around you. So, yeah. so that's part of it. I mean, these guys come out of a uh, location-based uh, game tournament, you know, business. So it's not just you're playing by yourself; you're playing in tournaments Local, with other locally, people around, yeah. right? Uh, so I think there's that contextual piece to it of you know the other players, you know, with the location elements. So the, it's the combination of those things, and we've talked before about, you know, if, I'm trying to remember the name of that company, that little company in Austin. Um, help me out here. It starts with a Q. Uh, uh, the product. Oh, uh, oh yeah, Crank. Yeah. Crank. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that's Q Rank, by the way, yeah. for 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 the listeners out there. Q R A N K. A uh, little company in Austin um, uh, came up with this thing, and it's basically like a. Um, kind of new version of, you know, playing trivia in the bars, yeah. um, you know, that we used to play over those tablets. Um, and what's the name of that company, Rob? Uh, I'm struggling with names right now. Yeah, I know. It, um, the uh, NTN. Yeah. NTN Trivia. Uh, Buzz Time. Yep. That, that's, uh, that's the guys who did all the trivia in the bars. And so Crank uh, basically pushed that into, in, into an app uh, form. And, and then allowed the businesses to create their own trivia questions and all that kind of stuff, and then you can play against other people. So if you now take something like that and then you layer in this, you know, where you can then, you know, deliver location ads, there's an interesting combination. So Crank, go talk to the guys over at uh, Press OK, and let's see what you guys can do. Come and on. There's a, ma- a marriage made in heaven, and I think that like any time where you can create, uh, from a game developer standpoint, you can create, uh, you can generate eCPMs of uh, 10 to $20 dollars, well worth looking into this uh, as long as there's yeah. network play. I guess that's the key is that uh, localized. Yeah. And I think the thing that this that they need for success are a ton or one at least local advertiser, right? That That's the thing is that uh, if I have no local advertisers around me, right, uh, I think right. there's a huge opportunity to play if I'm a local advertiser to be the only guy in there, which would be the great thing. But if there's nobody around me, it, it kind of defeats the purpose. Those ads aren't going to be as effective. So uh, this is going to be obviously a broad appeal. The API is going to help. ECPMs of 10 to $20 is going to help, and hopefully some of the local advertisers will jump on board. Yeah. Uh, sounds yeah. good to me. You know, any, I, 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 I'm always a, I'm a huge advocate of anybody who uh, from the development community who can actually generate some revenue. Uh, you know, I, I, love, uh, uh, I love when uh, application developers can actually make some money off of what they're doing so that they come out with the next version. So uh, Press OK launching a Place Play. Place Play. Um, I like the name too. That's a cool name. Yeah, Place Play. There's a lot of names that we, we poo-poo over here on this show, just so you know. But uh, Place Play, I like it. Yeah, Press OK, Place Play. So go and do that. If you're if you're a, a game developer that with a network component of it, which means that you're playing against uh, some other folks, um, why why not bring that local and uh, and keep yeah. them engaged a little deeper and and generate some revenue from from local advertisers? Sweet, good. Uh, Four story. Uh, we've talked about chalkboard, and, and they've uh, actually arrived in the U.S. 
Yeah, so so you know nothing big here other than say that you know they they've left Singapore and Malaysia and which is where they're based and uh, they've they've brought chalkboard to the U.S. Um, chalkboard is uh, if you're not familiar with it, uh, basically um, you know similar in some respects to what we just talked about, but a, a you know a local ad uh, play, location based ad network play, targeted at small and medium businesses. Um, and the way they do that, obviously, is you know focus on the cost side of you know getting involved in the system. So this is all about low cost metrics, um, you know, simple, easy to use, uh, easy to deploy uh, type of network. And they uh, the, the way that they make it low cost and simple for small medium businesses is they fix price it. So there's no per user per ad delivered, you know, per anything. It's you know ninety nine cents a day. Yeah. 99 cents a day. That's just flat rate. Flat rate. Yeah. It's a yeah. unique way of doing it, that's for sure. And it's disruptive yeah. to the way that people are doing it right now in North America. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, you, you know, and, and it's pretty powerful too in terms of what you can do. So you can deliver your, your, your ad over, you know, SMS, over Twitter. It combines a whole bunch of different services together. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of cool, actually. And these guys, uh, you know, not a small company, 4,300 customers in Asia. Mm hmm. Forty three hundred. That's four thousand three hundred. Right? Yeah, no, the, the numbers the numbers are huge. And um, I was reading somewhere. I don't. Um, I seem to not have a lot of stuff in front of me tonight. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> First day back from vacation. It's all right, man. Yeah, yeah. But uh, in one of the releases I, I, I read uh, earlier in the week around this, they were talking about how they expect to, uh, you know, do well in the U.S. Even though you know there's a lot, a lot more players in the space in the U.S. than there is over in Singapore and Malaysia, they expect to do a lot better here because um, uh, when you look at the businesses that would, you know, are potential customers for them, I think they said seventy-seven percent of those businesses uh, are on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, in the U.S. versus um, when you look at the businesses that they went after in Singapore and Malaysia, you know, when they were starting out, I think, you know, and this is a year ago or whatever it is, uh, I think it was like less than 7% uh, yeah. were on. So, you know, they're, they're using that as a metric to say like, you know, Twitter, you know, being some kind of a benchmark in terms of companies on Twitter, not individuals. Um, that would actually leverage a system, and that's a big part of their user base is, is using it from a Twitter promotion and uh, uh, engagement perspective. Yeah, I, I mean, I think he was kind of flipping when he said he doesn't think that the U.S. is going to be a challenge because, I mean, it's a very competitive uh, environment inside of the U.S. And, and I would say that, um, uh, you know, the consumer uh, adoption, uh, you, you know, I think he, com he compared it to taking six months to learn how to do uh, uh, Google AdWords or AdSense. And I think that yeah. uh, this has got to be simple. And, and simple can only work for so long. I mean, people have got to be have got to see significant returns on this. And, well, uh, there's, that's got to, what's there's got to be real value and function in it, yeah. right? So. Yeah. Well, you know, it's good It's good that they're here. I like, I like the fact that they're bringing a new... Um, you know, a new payment method uh, that might disrupt the rest of the other guys and, and open this up a little bit more. Uh, but it's always good to have multiple uh, sources. And, and I think that that's one of the things that uh, is unique about it is the 99 cents a day flat rate. Let's just uh, yeah. you know, get as many companies as you can. There's some volume. Absolutely. Volume, volume. So, uh, so that's what they call it. Chalkboard launches in the U.S. They're calling themselves obviously a, uh, you know, a hyper-local marketing platform. And, and I think everybody's doing that right now. So, um, uh, but you're happy to see some competition. Chalkboard in the U.S., not to be confused with chalkboard, the uh, we talked about this before, the uh, college and university back end for uh, teachers and students. Right. Yeah. Change the name. Uh, our last uh, big story, big broad touching story today. Uh, uh, you know, uh, this this falls into the category with me as if it's like, haven't they already done this before? I, I would have assumed that this was done. This is uh, the Weather Channel uh, basically serving up ads that are relevant to, uh, you know, ambient things around me like the time of day and the temperature outside and actually pushing ads that are relevant right yeah it's done uh but it's 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 not done in the uk which is the <laughs> oh, for, okay. for this announcement so but um, wouldn't it just be one ad always it's like it's cold and rainy go somewhere else uh, yeah, oh. <laughs> sorry i think we have one listener in the uk not anymore <laughs> they're, they're gone now uh, uh, oh um yeah, so the Weather Channel obviously is is very well known in North America. Um, 
you know, has has huge. Uh, uh, I don't know what what their ranking is on Alexa these days, but it, you know, like they're like one of the top twenty websites. You know, well in Canada, in Canada, the Weather Network's got to be number one by a far thing. I mean, that's all yeah, we talk about, but, right? By far, but but anyways, uh, in the UK, <laughs> they're not, uh, and they're not well known, and so they basically said, "Look, we want to be the the number one player uh, weather player in the UK." Uh, and one one of the things that we're going to do to to help achieve that is is we're going to use this platform we have called Ad Adapter, um, and we're going to deliver uh, loca- um, you know local ads based on you know weather data that we have in the system. Mm-hmm. And so the ex- one of the examples that, that I read in the release was they talk about how uh, uh, LL Bean uses it in the U.S. and they say so LL Bean basically. Um, you know, brings up ads for certain types of clothing depending on temperature and, you know, a whole bunch of other things. Um, you know, so if it's really cold and rainy, we'll give you the raincoat from L.L. Bean with this, you know, umbrella and so on and so forth. And, and so doing that kind of advertising, you know, it's interesting. So, you know, it's based on location. It's based on a bunch of other variable data that they have access to. Um, they claim, they claim that uh, ad adapter, ad 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 adapt is that how you say it? Am I saying that right? Ad ad adapter. Ad adapter. Yes, it's ad adapter. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah. terrible name. Terrible name. Anyways, should we make fun of this one now? No, here, here's a bad one. But anyways, um, because I can't say it. So, ad um, anyways, they claim that these these adverts offer 127 percent greater click through rate than the average performance of other marketing on Weather.com. Well, hey, it's got to work. It's got to work. It's got to work. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm gonna. This is this is a this is my uh, my one on one message to the Weather Network right now. This is from the heart. Look, if you really, 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 really want to be number one in every single market, I, here, here here's the tip for you. It's an absolute. It's a no brainer. If you want to be number one in the UK, you want to be number one in Canada, you want to be number one in the US. Stop lying. Get the weather right. Right? I, I mean, I think that it's... That's, that's all we can ask for, right? Stop, hey. stop giving us bad news. Yeah. Like in Canada, the Weather Network just puts it, like every seventh day is like 30 degrees and sunny. And then... Well, they're, they're trying to... They're, they're trying, yeah, you know. They, I know. I know. It's like it, they're trying to be optimistic for us, but every seventh day is 30 degrees and sunny and the and, and day one to six are like minus 30 and sun and, and uh, snowing. Or, yeah. So... Well, I appreciate see, it. See, like, so, so they're, they're, they're CNN, right, right, which is there, and they basically have some big catastrophe or disaster going at every moment. And, Absolutely. And they don't have one. They create one. They create right? it. I mean, with a big headline and a big name. And then there's the Weather Network, which gives you, like, five days of crap, you know, then, with the one good day. Held so out far there. out of reach. Right. So, anyways. Um, I, I'm good. I, I like this idea because... You know, yeah. why not use every piece of information that you have to tailor the message? And, uh, you know, the, the one ad that I, that I did see, it's like 35 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hovering around zero degrees Celsius. It's like the ad is for, you know, a, of a person uh, swaying on a, uh, on a hammock on a beach between two palm trees. Like, I mean, that makes sense, right? So, uh, you yeah. know, I can understand the click-through rates and the, uh, the, the, uh, the revenue generated, the activity and the engagement being much higher if it's based on that. So I'm all for it. But uh, stop lying, and I will be a big fan. <laughs> Tell me the truth. Yeah, you're done no, I mean, radio. It's you know, it, I, I'm with you though. Your opening comment. I, I don't understand why this. I mean, they've been doing this for some time now. It's not new, even to the Weather Channel. No. Obviously, there's U.S. 60 brands apparently that are already using this in the U.S. Um, guys, I mean, like, why aren't there other companies doing this in the U.K. already? But anyways. You know, it strikes um, me like I, I'm in the mobile space, and uh, so I, you know, I went to get a a weather app for my iPad uh, because that's what I do as a Canadian. I go out and, and I find the weather pad, and everything costs money. Like people are paying money for apps, weather apps. I'm like, really? So, uh, you know, yeah. you get one free with your iPhone, but you don't get one with your iPad, and uh, and people are paying like they're paying a dollar ninety nine, two ninety nine for some beautiful weather apps, and I and I, I you know, there's money to be made in weather, I guess. Boy, oh boy. No question. Oh, so, hey, I just found the number. There you go. I actually found something. What's that? While we're on the show. Uh, so, <laughs> nice. weather.com, the we- weather.com, which is their Weather Channel's uh, site in the U.S., yeah. is the 26th most visited website on Alexa. There That's you go. incredible. That's yeah. incredible. 
That's incredible. And, and with 60% of its users accessing it via the mobile device. Yeah. Huge, huge numbers. So, I mean, this makes sense and hopefully makes sense in the UK market as well. You know, location specific, weather specific ads, make it right. happen. I just assume that it's it's uh, everybody on the mobile device uh, checking the weather channel to say, basic, weather.com to say basically, no, 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 you said it was going to be sunny in 25. Uh, let me check again because it's pouring and minus two or whatever it is. But and I went and I went and bought you know that raincoat you know exactly my, that on, lime on. fog raincoat. I bought it because you said and this was the ad you delivered with a coupon by the way. Nice. And then you didn't follow through. You didn't wanna, follow through. I want a refund. Well, that's when you uh, you know if you've ever been in New York when it starts to rain, it's um, absolutely incredible to watch this happen. Is that you've got all the street vendors that are there, and they're the barometers for what's going on. It's like they know their business so well that uh, they can tell when it's going to rain in New York City. And the moment the first drop hits, I, I don't know what they do. They flip their their carts over and they they go from selling purses uh, and peanuts to umbrellas. Like right. they, they do it like that. And I think that you know that's. I don't know how how I got there, but I'm just thinking like that's what the Weather Channel has to do is like they have to create a relationship with those guys. We're way off here. I'm I'm gonna end this conversation because we right. as Canadians we can talk about weather forever. <clears throat> those are the five stories. Placecast launching the self serve platform, but only if you're a big brand with big reach. It's not for the mon pause yet. Amex launches the like link love. Um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, program with uh, with Facebook. Press OK launches Place Play. That's a good name, good but name. it's tough to say. Chalkboard actually uh, coming to the U.S. They're bringing the cloud of 4,300 customers that they've got and the experience they've had there and a new pricing model in at 99 cents a day into the U.S. They're going to take over the, the U.S. and the Weather Channel has adapted their ads to actually show um, relevant ads based on weather in the U.K., which is, uh, which is those are the top five. Those are important. If you have any comments on those, let us know. If we've missed anything, let us know. Reach out at untether at gmail.com or you can reach Asif at asif at the LVMA.com. Let's talk about funding news, buddy. You know, um, I, I think that we're starting to get into, uh, you know, smaller investments. I think that they even talked about last quarter being a down quarter in investments. So maybe we're not in a bubble. Um, right. First off, nearby systems, Motorola Ventures getting back into the game. Yeah, so th- this is an interesting one. It's just a, it's a little uh, a little investment, a million dollars, um, coming from uh, Motorola Ventures uh, I- Innovation Endeavors, which is uh, Eric Schmidt's uh, uh, fund, and uh, Metamorphic Ventures. So um, together, a million bucks. Uh, nearby Systems, you know, don't want to say too much about them, but they're in that indoor micro location or or indoor GPS kind of space. So the you know uh, there are a lot of guys we've talked a lot about indoor location lately. You know we talked about B Media and and uh, you know that does Wi-Fi. These guys are in the same uh, business as that. So they they uh, they put Wi-Fi in retail locations and then deliver location-based uh, deals, offers, content, uh, concierge services, etc. Uh, based on somebody's actual position in the store, um, so you know, and there's lots of guys in this space. So yep. uh, point inside, uh, uh, you know, um, um, what's the other guys I was just talking about the other days? Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of them. So there's a ton of them, and uh, yeah, there there are, there are a lot of this. It's a it's a very competitive space, but uh, uh, you know, it's a million dollars. It's a it's a good seed round, and we'll see what happens from there. Yeah, and and you know I think Motorola, uh, you know I don't know if they're using Motorola gear uh, in this yeah. as well uh, to do Wi-Fi. I don't know, but uh, would make sense. Well, I'd, I'd say so. Cisco. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that would be that would go over well. Oh yeah, we're gonna go with the Cisco uh, equipment. Okay, uh, th- thanks for the yeah. cash, but. Yeah. Uh, well, that's it. So, I mean, a million dollars isn't isn't. Uh, I mean, that's more in line with what we expect uh, for an, uh, a company of this size and investments like yeah. this in a space like this. That I mean, it's not uh, it's not a sure thing. So, uh, spread spread the uh, spread the smaller investments. What about KPCB investing uh, in uh, Trendyol? Trendyol. Yeah, this one's interesting uh, only because you know these guys you know and. You know, when we talk about KP, this is Kleiner Perkins we're talking about. So, yep. you know, amongst the biggest of biggest, uh, you know, tech Silicon venture Valley funds. Tech. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Val- Valley tech funds. Um, and so these guys have put uh, the numbers, the official numbers aren't out, but uh, from the release, uh, I saw that there was, it's 25 to 30 million in a, in this company called Trendyol, which is based in Turkey. 
Um, and it's a private shopping site. So this is along the same lines as uh, Guilt or Hot Look, um, you know, or, or even you know eBay's uh, uh, you know fashion store that's out there. So there's a lot of guys in this space, but um, um, apparently um, the valuation is 150 million for this company that's been around in Turkey. It's their first investment uh, in Turkey. Uh, no big surprise there. Yeah. But uh, you know, I'm you know interesting. I, I don't know what prompted this. I don't have much more to say about it. But you know, you're talking about, you know, a, a local, a, a local uh, online uh, e-commerce uh, shopping play. You know, it, it's funny because uh, you know with Kleiner, they're they're typically looking for the best company to invest in, and and I wonder if there's a technology play there that um, that they saw obviously to put that much money in, uh, that 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 they haven't seen in the U.S. or if there's a market uh, in Turkey and surrounding areas that they just have no that there's no competition there. So instead of investing in something like uh, in North America where, where it gets a little bit competitive, uh, why not invest in Turkey and then own, own a market and expand from there, yeah. especially if you can bring that technology back to the States. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, Kleiner, Kleiner uh, you know, reputable firm. That's a lot of money. No question. So we'll, we'll see where it goes. Yeah, well, it's doing their best. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't seen much of them in the way of funding. Um you know, since the ridiculous deals that we saw a while yeah. ago, smaller it's been deals. A little like the last couple of weeks on the funding front, so yeah, and and even uh, we haven't seen a lot of consolidation. But maybe it's just because we're in you know towards the end of July, everybody's taking vacation. Yeah, it's for, summer. You know, the deals got done before everybody took off, and they'll they'll pick up again in September. Oh yeah, I think so. I think it'll be uh, it'll be a busy August as well. Well, that's the funding news. Let's talk about the product of the week, which is a pretty cool one. I gotta say, I mean, this is totally totally it. different. Yeah, th this is something you know. I actually read this uh, this announcement uh, probably over a month ago, and uh, I, I just bookmarked it and uh, kind of wanted to bring it up at the right time. And um, so there's a band called Blue Brain. Yes. And um, and so what they did was, which was kind of cool, they released uh, an album called the Na and the album's called the National Mall. But what's totally different about this is is that they the album is delivered in the form of, of an iPhone app. And the content, you know, the music itself is uh, kind of revealed uh, to the listener, so to speak, based on your physical location in the National Mall, uh, the park in Washington, D.C. What, so, what if you're not there? I don't think you get anything. I think it, it, it's basically, you know, the music changes and evolves uh, based on the path that you take through the, through the National Mall. Really? But, yeah. But, I mean, it's obviously when I buy the app... Um, I can actually uh, hear all the songs, but it's it's got to be some kind of location experience, right? That, that yeah, and I in. think I think I think the app basically over time, uh, you know, new content is added, right? So so the, they release you know new new site specific compositions is is how I understand it. Well, yeah, because it says that uh, this app is intended to be used within the boundaries of the National Mall Park in Washington D.C. So it's a free app, and um, it, they say that. It's a first in a series of location-aware musical compositions designed to be right. heard at specific sites around the world. I mean, this is like broadcaster, you, you know, um, but on a micro level and uh, involving music. Um, that's that's this is pretty cool. It, it it's really really cool. Um, and they, uh, I, th I think they they did something in Central in Central Park recently as well. Really? So, yeah. Are you playing it right there? Is that? Did you hear it? Yeah. I just pulled up one of their pieces. There you go. Nice. Anyway. That is that is that is incredible. It's a um, um, it's a it's a whopping four hundred megs though to download, but uh, but that's that's pretty cool. It's the National Mall by Blue Brain, and you can get information uh, from their website at www.bluebra. Dot in so blue brain right yes like blue bra you know it's, it's suitable. what can I say it's yeah suitable for work but uh, you know so if you're in Washington and and you've played with this or if you've never heard this and you're in Washington uh, go and do it and let us know I'd love we'd love to hear Absolutely. back uh, yeah. how, how this uh, how this plays out um, it's pretty cool I hope to see much more of this you know it's it's the whole idea of, of you know bringing context. Um, 
you know, and, and, and con delivering content, you know, based on where somebody is, you know, that's, that's relevant to them. And, you know, we, and we've talked about the idea of, um, you know, interrupting, uh, you know, like you could be listening to whatever you've got on your iPod, you know, as you're walking around a place, but, you know, maybe you, you, you cross by a historical site and then, you, you know, the, the music is stopped automatically, assuming you've opted into the service and, you know, and then you're, you're pushed content. Uh, you know that gives you some history of what's in front of you or something like that i mean there's all kinds of cool things like that that i think are yet to come yeah we have just begun and that's where a company like broadcaster really plays in and i and i love what those guys are doing but um i, I think that when you start to think about what blue brain did um you, you know why wouldn't you be able to do that with uh, even uh, artists of today right which mm -hmm. is uh, or artists of today, artists, artists of the last 50 years where you, you know, uh, you opt into this. It's like the history of rock and roll. You don't have to go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You can you can experience it that, you know, you walk past a place and it's like, hi, did you know that uh, Bruce Springsteen sang here during, uh, you know, President uh, Barack Obama's uh, inauguration or Pete Seeger played over here or, or this was the place that Bob Dylan got us, you know, right. that kind of stuff. You could you could do those kind of things. Um and if anybody's out there doing it, I'd love to hear about it because uh, that, that to me is, uh, is very powerful. L live history is what it is. Pretty cool. Yeah. So if Blue, cool. if Blue Brain is doing that, uh, we look forward to that. But go and take a look at it. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's called the National Mall. It's available on iTunes. It's by Blue Brain. You can check them out at bluebra.in, which spells Blue, Blue Brain. All right. Last thing that we got to get through, the resource of the week, which is pretty cool. Nick yeah, the Hughes. resource of the week is uh, is a is a blog post by a guy named Nick Hughes, and um, if if you're interested in the in the space of location based search, um, you know which, which is is a growing field, you know like social plus location uh, and and kind of real time search. There's a lot of guys playing in this space. Uh, we've talked about local mind in particular in Montreal, yep. uh, but there's also local, which is L O C Q L uh, out of Seattle. Both are covered in this in this uh, in this post. But it's just a good summary of, of of you know getting up to date on what's going on in in local search in particular. Um, and so we'll post a link to that. But uh, you know, thanks to Nick uh, for for putting together a, a good piece. You know, I, I uh, great piece and a great summary and a huge fan of Local Mind and the way they do it. And, and I just did, here's a plug, not really a plug, but I did a, an interview uh, with Andrew Osis, who's the uh, president uh, and CEO and one of the founders of Point, which is a Calgary-based company. And, uh, and the interview's up on Untether.tv right now. And um, he, he is very clear in, in pointing out that you know, there's a difference between local search and local find, and I think that that's really where uh, maybe 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 what uh, what we've got here uh, with Nick, it's not so much local search. It is it's 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 find. It's local find, and and um, and you know you might you, we might dance around those topics, but or those yeah. you know f search versus find, um, but local is about finding. It's not about arbitrary search, uh, and this is the this Absolutely. is, this, no, is I, this is the big thing with me is that it is find and and. Uh, but Nick does a great job of summarizing some of these things about social, local, real time. Um, but if you wrap it up in find versus search, I think that that, that kind of completes the uh, the picture here. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. Yeah. But a, a great resource. And uh, Nick, thank you for doing this. Great summary of a lot of these, uh, you know, uh, terms and, uh, and uh, concepts. So uh, go and check it out. It's on Business Insider. We'll include the link right up there. Right, right above us. Right there. And that's the resource, man. That's it. That's episode it's number wrap. thirty-five. And just, just one last thing. I got to do it. Um, it's, it's been, it's been on my mind all day. And um, uh, little, little personal plug. So Re Renee Warren, who heads up our uh, West Coast U.S. San Francisco operations, uh, got engaged uh, on the weekend. So congrats to Renee and Dan. Um, you know, well done and. Uh, just wish you guys, uh, you know, uh, great success in, in the future. Congratulations, Renee and Dan. That's amazing. Got to do it. You got extending the LBMA family. I love that. Yeah. Well, that's it. I don't have anything else to say. I don't have any announcements, man. No. I've, I've plugged my one episode of Untether.tv. Uh, Renee and Dan are getting married. We've gone through 35 episodes. And uh, we're back into a regular Feels routine. Like we're married, though, doesn't it? It does. You know, I kind of get that. I kind of yeah. get that. Yeah. 
I, I think we're in that uh, you know familiar stage, right? Which was uh, you know it was tentative at the beginning, combative in the middle, familiar now. I think it'll yeah. go back into uh, raging arguments at some point. You can count on that. Uh, but this was a pretty tame uh, you know kind of link, love, yeah. quick, <laughs> exactly like, like link love, like oh, link love, yeah. done, done, um, and peace. And that's it. And that's it for episode number 35. Uh, if you have any suggestions, comments, criticisms, um, you have any uh, weather updates for the Canadians, uh, if you're a weatherman and I've offended you in any way, shape, or form, reach out. I'd love to hear from you. Untether at gmail.com or you can reach, obviously, Asif at asif at the uh, Come out on Tuesday. Uh, if you're uh, watching or listening to this after Tuesday, you missed it. Sorry. But uh, keep an eye out at the lbma.com for future events in Toronto and around the world because it is an organization that is not just located in Toronto. Um, and you can find all that information at the lbma.com. You can reach me, of course, at uh, untether.tv or at Rob Woodbridge on the Twitter. And that's it for episode number 35. Asif, we'll see you next week for number 36. What does that make us? Are you past, past middle age? I don't know. I think middle age Again, is 40. Okay. When we hit 40, we should go out and buy sports cars. We should. Yeah. All right. Over. We'll see you guys. We'll see you guys next yeah. week. Bye. On the next episode of This Week in Location Based Marketing. Thanks for watching, everybody.